Fred, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you for having me on. Well, so so tell us a little about yourself. Like, tell us a little about your journey and kind of how you how you got into real estate. It's definitely not the traditional path, is <laughs> what, I, what what I know. Well, it, it is a little bit, but there is definitely some nuances for sure. So I started out as uh, working as a computer engineer, and I had a long and successful career with that. Uh, working at a lot of technology startup companies, it was super exciting. Uh, I was right in the middle of the dot-com boom. And it was such an exciting time, such an exciting time. But what happened was um, I saw my industry just get turned completely upside down. We went through the bursting of the dot-com bubble. And then uh, the September 11th terrorist attacks, just all this turmoil in the world. And what I realized at the time was that I was taking on this huge risk because I was too dependent on the paycheck from my job. It was my only source of income. And uh, although I loved my job, I loved what I was doing, I realized that there was all these circumstances that are completely out of my control because no matter how uh, how talented of an engineer I was or how valuable of an employee I was, it didn't matter because if things were not going well financially at the company or in the industry at large, I could quickly lose my job for, for no fault of my own. And so that in, ended up inspiring me to learn about investing in assets, in hard assets. And um, I mean, there's so many different different types, but I was uh, attracted to real estate. And that's what I started with, as, as a lot of people do. Uh, I saw many folks around me do very well with it. And um, I thought, well, here's something that I can continue to work as an engineer, but own some properties. And so uh, I did that for many years. I, I loved it. I did really well with it. But uh, after uh, some time, I had the opportunity uh, through through my real estate education, uh, as well as through some of the networking I was doing, I had the opportunity to get involved in node investing. Mm -hmm. And node investing, Alice, it's all about buying the debt. You buy the debt, you own it, and then um, you become the lender. You step into the shoes of the lender there, there's a lot of advantages to, to doing this. I mean, banks, banks figured this out long ago. This is a business. It's been around since biblical times, right? And banks always have the business motives where they don't want to own property. They just want to own the debt. They want to land on the property and be a secured lien holder. It's a very secure position to be in. And they make their business around that. And that's essentially what, what we do with node investing. Uh, my specialty is that we buy loans that were already originated. They're in place. They have a good track record on them and everything. And so we step in, we invest our capital, and then we become the beneficiary of that cash flow and that income. And so node investing allows you as the investor to step across the aisle and go from being the one making the monthly payments to becoming the one receiving the monthly payments. And that's what node investing is all about. Have you ever to step in, Fred, like and take over a deal, like someone stopped paying? Like, have you ever run into that scenario? What would happen in that scenario? You know, because it is just a paper note. But then if you got to foreclose on the property, then what? Yeah, no, that that uh, is something that that you may encounter a lot of options. Um there's a lot of rules to follow. That's that's a complex area of note investing. But in the end, between note servicers that manage the day-to-day the -day and the hands-on, uh, working with, with good attorneys, they will manage that process for you. But usually the most uh, common outcome of that type of a situation is that everyone uh, comes together and puts together some kind of an agreement a plan to get things back on track yeah. because no lender wants to take a property back. Absolutely not. And that's usually going to give you the lowest ROI of any possible uh, exit from a deal. So always um, I like the idea of working towards some kind of an agreement, whether 
the loan gets modified or uh, restructure or help uh, refinance any any number of options. So there's there's always options, but for the lender, they have that flexibility. They can extend flexibility if appropriate, and um, and really do things in a way that's going to set up for long-term success. Yeah, that's awesome. In terms of yield in today's market, I mean, as, as interest rates continue to go up and higher, yeah. like how does that impact the note space? So the way that impacts the note space is in the pricing. Notes are bought and sold on the secondary market every single day. And that pricing is impacted by the um, the yields, the current rates. So the 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 rates of uh, a couple years back where some loans might have been at three and four percent that impacts the pricing and then as the rates rise that that all gets taken into account and so on an ongoing basis uh yes rates may rise rates may fall it doesn't matter loans are bought and sold no matter what and um it's just the pricing that that gets impacted so as things progress, things move, we're, we're in a rising rate environment. And uh, I suspect that's going to be continuing for quite some time. And so is there, you know, no investing is typically, in my experience, has been kind of a, a place where investors have found yield. I mean, do you see that to con- you see that changing over the next 12 months? I mean, what is your experience being in the market right now? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's always changing. Right now, yields are uh, compressed because there's a lot of capital flowing into the market, as there is with so many other assets like multifamily and real estate, uh, single family real estate, all of that. There's a lot of capital seeking yield. So that that has some impact on pricing. But uh, we're, we're going through some turmoil. It's it's coming, it's getting started. And undoubtedly, there's going to be some liquidity crunches that are usually part of a a recession or downturn, anything like that. And so that will also impact pricing uh, at that time. So it's a, it's a very fluid environment for sure. Yeah. Are you moving? Would you, would you say you're allocating into other assets as well? Are you going to stay focused in this kind of what what do you see? Uh, You, you have a fund as well. Is that correct? You started a fund? Yeah, yeah, we have we have a fund. Um, no, we're we're focused on on notes. Absolutely, we've definitely had uh, some changes in in the business model and in some of our offerings. But for me as an investor, I also invest in other deals and other asset classes myself personally. And so that right. that could be multifamily or residential real estate or commercial real estate, whatever, whatever that might be. And so it's always good to be watching, watching the market cycles and uh, looking for opportunities to take advantage of, of, um, as a passive investor, Fred, like for someone maybe who isn't like you or me, who kind of runs a fund for a living, yeah. you know, but they want to begin to diversify into alternative investments, right? Because, you know, they say, man, if you want liquidity to be in the public markets, but if you want to truly build wealth, you got to be in the private markets, right? I mean, this is where right. wealth is built, but yet, so like, how, how do you vet the landscape of opportunity? Like, how does someone know if they should be in note investing versus multifamily investing versus owning a duplex down the street? I mean, what is your rule of thumb or how do you help your investors kind of think through the difference of if, if your note investing fund is better versus, you know, a multifamily deal, for example? Yeah, they're, they're both great. They're both great. And what I say is get yourself to a point where you can do a little of both for diversification, but always start with what you know, right? Um, most people understand a single family house. It's pretty basic. Um, and for some people, it's it's a wonderful investment if they want to be actively managing it, actively hands-on with it. Um, but But certainly multifamily, investments, uh, a note fund, or buying individual notes, that's great too. Uh, Don't think that you have to go and take on everything at once, right? Like try it on, try it on like a shoe and walk a couple miles in it and then see how it is. And then you you may get comfortable. You may um, at that time decide to go into a different asset class, a different type of investment, but that's the way to get started. It all comes from learning and education and trying different things. You may uh, buy a single family house as a rental property 
and decide, hey, I love it. I want to keep doing this. Or for someone else, they may say, I hate this. Uh, it's a great investment on paper, but I hate the, the headaches and, and all of that. And so um, maybe for, for someone like that, they're better off going to uh, being a passive investor in multifamily uh, investment deal where someone else uh, runs the deal, does the, the big due diligence and manages the properties managed professionally. So for the investor, it's, it's passive, completely passive. And, and the same thing with, with notes, right? Notes can be, it can be risky if you don't know what you're doing. There's a lot of moving parts. It's difficult to find notes to buy and maintain those relationships. That's what, that's what we do. And so a lot of people, they come to me and say, hey, Fred, um, I love notes. It's a great asset class. I understand it. I'm a finance person and it makes all makes sense to me, but I just don't want to get involved in, in the whole business. Right. So for someone like that, a note fund is a great option because they can participate yet everything's per professionally managed. And in a fund, the investor gets to leverage the expertise, the experience and the relationships and the skill set of the fund managers and the operators of that deal. Right. And so that's, that's a huge benefit. And that goes, whether it's a note fund or a multifamily syndication or a, co a larger commercial deal, it's yeah. all the same. And, and that's really the benefit. Yeah. And I think about that from like an income threshold too, right? Like if you are in a place where you can make, you're in it, but you're creating income, like you figured out how to make money, a fund or like working with someone like you or I is a great place to go and multiply that cash. Cause you're, you're not, you're passive. We we're, we're the expert in multiplying it. You're the expert in making it. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, and I love that you have that. Let me ask you, let's go back to no investing real quick. I'm curious about this. Does your fund or do you recommend, like, have you gone the approach of single notes, you buy single notes, or are you buying kind of a book of notes? Is it better to buy one or do you buy many? And kind of what do you recommend other people to do as they as they vet either a fund or particular note investment? Yeah, it. Um, so we in the fund, we buy uh, pools of notes. So they're, okay. yeah. And so when you do that, as you can imagine, we, you know, capital gets raised and then we're able to go out and buy in bulk quantity. And so in doing that, you can negotiate better discounts. Um, you have better access to notes. It's a lot easier to buy a pool of 20 or 50 or 100 notes than it is to maybe buy one, one or two, which absolutely uh, an investor can do that. You can buy single notes. Uh, they get bought and sold every day between investors. But uh, when you're buying at, uh, at a higher level, higher volume, you can negotiate better discounts. And what I found is you often get better access to, uh, to be able to buy notes and more, more opportunities come your way, yeah. but it, 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 there's no right or wrong answer. It yeah. comes down to whatever, whatever level you're at. If you're a new note investor, then you're probably going to be buying one or two notes at a time. Uh, you're not going to be going to look at a pool of 20 notes. Give us the back end inside look in your regard. Are you bidding against other people in the secondary market? Market for the notes is that is that kind of is there like a clock that runs out and then you win it how does that actually how does that actually work on the note space yeah there's there's um there's many different ways so sometimes uh notes will get sold through a broker who will conduct a bidding and auction arrangement there'll be deadlines they'll send out spreadsheets of notes to the different buyers mm -hmm. and everyone's bidding against each other uh, for the pool of notes. So sometimes that happens, but other times it's through a personal relationship. A lot of the note industry is personal relationships and you'll get a call or someone you've transacted business with before that they trust you. They know you're going to close when you say you will. And so you can have the opportunity to negotiate directly with a note seller and purchase that way. Uh, I've done, I've done all, all those different ways. And um, th there's nothing set in stone that has to be a certain way. It's whatever the buyer and seller agree to. Now, some of the larger uh, institutions, they're required uh, to go through a licensed broker and conduct in an auction format. Um, and that's what you, you see, like Fannie, 
Freddie or FDIC, they'll sell pool, huge, huge pools of notes, but it'll be done in an auction style through yeah. a, through a licensed broker that uh, allows for a third party uh, hands off transaction. Fred, the income you get off note investing, is that considered passive income? And can you use depreciation off your off of, of real estate deals to offset the income on your, your note uh, investments? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, no, it's not passive income. Um, note investing generates a lot of tax liability, and it's going to come through either as interest income or capital gains, and that's it. Um, and so it generates a lot of tax liability. And so the one thing that I always love to talk about and teach about is utilize tax advantage accounts like self-directed IRAs or an HSA or a Roth IRA, anything, any of those vehicles, because you can buy notes in those if you're with a self-directed custodian. And whether it's individual notes you're buying or investing in a note fund, you're getting preferential tax treatment. And when you combine those two strategies together, it's very powerful because you can earn, earn your return and um, you're either deferring taxes or it's tax-free growth if right. you're in the case of a Roth. Right. Yeah. So you're saying it, you know, it makes, it doesn't make sense maybe, maybe for it just to invest cash into a note because you're, you're, you know, whenever you go to either receive that income or sell that note, the tax man's coming for you, where if you invest in through some type of tax advantage account, all of that can literally be avoided because it's a tax advantage account like a Roth or a 401k or self-directed, something like that. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Um, so what do you think, what do you think's next for the note investing space? I mean, it seems to be honest with you, kind of an antiquated process. Like, is there any new technology or things that are happening on that front uh, yeah. that make note, note investing interesting? Well, it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely interesting to see uh, one thing that's one technology that um, people are watching is blockchain, the technology behind cryptocurrency and everything. And we keep hearing about how, uh, how real estate transactions can be maybe be handled through blockchain technology, which uh, is very interesting. But if that happens, it's also going to happen with with um, the financing piece, the note, note and mortgage documents, because those um, those are done in an anti antiquated way, right? You uh, sign a note, you sign a mortgage, and then that mortgage document gets taken down to the county courthouse and recorded in the public record, just like a deed, a deed to a property does, right? The record the deed tra transferring the ownership. But then uh, a new mortgage or a deed of trust for you uh, guys out in the western part of the U.S. where you have deed of trust states, right? Uh, that 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 happens. So that's an area where it will be interesting to see what happens with the blockchain technology uh, over the coming years with respect to title um, title work and deeds and liens and encumbrances. Those those will be. Uh, probably handle differently over, over the next decade. We'll be watching to see how that evolves. Yeah, no, a big fan of a lot. We've talked a lot about blockchain technology on um, our YouTube channel and, and our future real estate podcast show. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see how this could be a, uh, an industry that was, is probably somehow primed for disruption, right? Like I think for those who really understand both of those two worlds, there's probably ways to, uh, and maybe not as a buyer, but maybe as like a, an intermediary or, or a service yeah. provider for note investors, uh, could be a really great uh, entry into that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Fred, man, I want our eyes to know where to find you, uh, where to continue. I know you're all over the internet. Uh, I've seen some of your episodes, so I'm grateful to have you on today, man. Where, where are you, um, where can folks follow along or even come to learn more about you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ellis. I really appreciate that. So I, I, uh, I love connecting with investors and uh, the best way to connect with me is at my website, which is fredmoskowitz.com. And I totally get it. It's not the easiest to spell. <laughs> so as an alternative, you can go to gift from Fred 
com. It will take you to my website. And from there, you can uh, sign up for my newsletter. You can learn about my book on node investing that's available uh, on Amazon and, uh, and connect with me that way. Also, if you prefer, any listeners prefer, you can use your mobile device and just text the keyword money to 215-461-4433. Three, three, and then just follow along with the prompts. And uh, as I said, I love networking, building relationships and uh, connecting with investors. So I look forward to, uh, to meeting and, and building new relationships. Yeah, I love that, man. Gift from Fred. I was going to say, you know, you really should create a new domain. So I like Gift from Fred a, a whole lot better. I think even though it's you have easier, great- it's but, easier to spell, <laughs> but I think it's a great marketing tactic. So learned a lot there, too, man. This was great. Thanks for kind of giving us the inside outs of no investing and what's ahead. And uh, I hope we'll, we'll go take advantage of that for sure. Yeah, thank you so much, Alice. Uh, been wonderful. Uh, conversation with you. And uh, thanks again for having me. I, I love, uh, love having powerful conversations about real estate and about investing. And uh, you're, you're a true leader in the field. And I commend you for what you're doing with this program. Thank you, Fred. Guys, if you uh, make sure you go check out his stuff, you're in Philly, give him a call. I know that's where he resides. So thanks again, man. Thank you. All right.